Hi everyone, every once in a while I come across an entry level bike that is worth mentioning and today I'm going to do a quick check of this 2019 Trek Marlin 6. This is a 29er, 17.5 is the size and the color is Viper Red. Look at that bright red color of the bike and very first thing you should do is take a look around and see if you find any small boxes or bags with small components and take that out first. And this is how the bike comes into the bike shop. I did find another box with small parts and I'm not gonna make this video about how to put a bike together. There is uh, plenty of good videos out there already telling you how to do it. So let me put this together and we'll take a look at how it's built. Just unwrapped it and installed the handlebar. You can see the front brake is not attached to the fork either. Look at that color, love the Viper Red. You can see Marlin 6 and inside the little box, yeah, that's the seat post and the saddle. Here you have the skewer for the front wheel, you have the manual for Suntour and from Trek. And you do have a set of pedals just to get you going. And here's the bike ready to go. It was a fun job and it didn't take me that long, mostly because the drivetrain was pretty much ready to go. Very little adjustment that I had to make. This is a 3x8, so 8 speed in the back, 11 to 32 I believe, an Altus rear derailleur. Uh, moving over you have Shimano Turne cranks. The crank length here is 175 millimeters and an Altus front shifter. This is a 3 by and as you can see the chain rings, well you can't really see, you gotta believe me, uh, the chain rings are stamped together so you cannot replace any of those. But um, the reason why I thought this was appealing, meaning Marlin 6, is because having 8 speeds here on the cassette means you have the free hub body that can take anything from 8, 9, 10 speed, 11 speed, even 12 speed Sunrace cassette or NX will fit on that free hub. So you can upgrade that anytime you want. Talking about free hub or the hubs, these are formula hubs. They are uh, cup and cone, very similar to Shimano's. And the wheels, 32 spokes, are uh, finished with, I don't know if you can see there, 622 by 20. That means 20 millimeter ID, so internal dimension rims. That's a Schrader valve, not a Presta valve and the tires that they've used on these wheels are XR2 29 by 2 inches these are not, these are the wire bead I'm pretty sure same XR2 tires are front 29 uh, 2.2 Schrader valve again not Presta and that is the wheel is built around a formula hub again QR front and rear and that brings me to the front the fork that's a 29er 51 millimeter offset Suntour XCT 30 30 refers to the 30 millimeter uh, steel stanchions that only give you uh, well they give you a lockout which is considered to be a feature you have preload Preload is because this is a coil fork, which is great for riding in winter or if you don't care about maintaining that suspension much. And that brings me to the frame. This is a pretty short head tube, it's 9 centimeters. As you can see, it's a straight head tube, non tapered, so inch and one eight, top to bottom, 69 and a half degrees for this frame. But uh, yeah, the frame is what's redesigned for 2019 and it is redesigned to hide all these cables and they provide a few other changes to it. If you look down here, you're going to see that this is what they consider to be uh, silver alpha aluminum. Uh, yeah, it's made in China entirely. And back here, you're going to see the size. This is a small medium. They also have... 18 and a half, which is kind of considered to be uh, medium. You have attachment points here for a rack and going back you can see QR again and uh, how the rear derailleur cable is routed here underneath the chainstays. Chainstay is 438 millimeters and together with that 69 and a half degrees headset gives you a good somewhat modern cross-country-ish type of geometry 
for a 29er and that's one of the reasons why I decided to go for this 2019 as opposed to the 2018 or older and looking here under the bike you can see the serial number of the product there's no production on that down tube obviously and you can see all the cables and hoses coming out of the frame right here yes everything is routed through including the brake hose some of you might not like that yes I don't like that part of it but there's nothing I can do then you have the front cable going through there that's the rear cable bottom bracket shell is 73 millimeter uh, threaded so it's standard for a mountain bike you can install any of the current cranks and bottom brackets on this which is a bonus if you look down here you're gonna see a little port yes indeed that is the exit for an internally routed dropper post 31.6 millimeter and the dropper post cable will come out over here go into the frame and come out right there next to the handlebars one last thing with the bike upside down you see 160 millimeter discs these are texture branded discs same with the brakes themselves HD 275 I think they are these are actually quite reliable I've used them in the past uh, they come with uh, resin uh, pads they can take metallic pads as well here in the back same thing you can see the uh, position of that caliper in the rear triangle which is quite uh, neat and the same disc 160 millimeter front and rear bike back on its feet and you can see the finishing touches they're all branded bond trigger the in-house brand for trek so bond trigger arvada is what the saddle is it comes with a seat post that is uh, offset 12 millimeters 31.6 quick release clamp here bond trigger branded as well the front of the bike you can see that extra port for your uh, dropper routing it comes with a 70 millimeter stem which is non, not branded you can see an extra spacers here so you can move your stem up and down just to make your handlebar comfortable handlebar which is 720 millimeter uh, width uh, has quite nice back sweep here it's bond trigger branded and it has a five millimeter rise so quite a good bar for an entry-level bike like this what you touch and feel here would be bond trigger uh, grips I don't really like the shape of these but these are lock-on grips and also you see the Shimano shifter which is not integrated with the brake lever obviously these are Tektor brakes you can see the somewhat two finger uh, lever over here bar clamp on both of them and these Shimano 8 speed Altus are actually true trigger shifters because downshifts just the way you would expect it but then to up shift the only way to do that you have to pull on the lever here so that's how it goes and uh, yeah it's quite good for what it's supposed to be obviously you have the same thing on the other side weight of the bike is 32.2 pounds that means 14.6 kilograms well that won't win any cross-country racing but uh, I guess it's quite standard for a bike in this uh, six seven hundred dollar uh, range a lot of that weight comes from the fork I think it's this is 2.8 kilograms fork wheels are probably not that uh, light same with the tires you have tubes in there also the cranks and that uh, bottom bracket are not the lightest around either so why did I get this then well first of all I wanted a bike that I could ride on the road yeah I know why not a road bike don't go there but uh, for that I don't want a suspension fork I don't care about it so this is good enough second I want to ride this in winter and if you look here at the uh, fork the 29 fork there's quite a bit of clearance to install a fatter tire for that no I'm not gonna buy a fat bike either the biggest problem usually with fatter tires is the rear triangle though and if you look at this 2019 frame it provides quite a bit of clearance I looked in the store at the previous model and a few other models that uh, this bike shop provided and this was by far the frame with the most clearance enough clearance up front for a 2.8 tire that's a 27 five wheel with plus size tires in the rear I have a WTB Ranger 2.8 and the clearance is 
look amazing just really good plenty plenty of room for the fatter tires i think i could probably even squeeze three inches front and rear if i really want to but uh yeah overall i'm pretty happy with this it is a nice bike if you want to use it the way it comes highly recommend to buy the six don't buy the seven it's uh, not worth it don't buy the five or four for quite a few reasons uh, this is a perfect beater bike for me service all my purposes and i'm looking forward to use it quite a bit definitely in winter what about you guys what do you use for beater bikes i would love to hear your comments any other suggestions on how to improve on a bike like this i would love to hear if you found this useful don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time i will see you folks on the trails cheers guys cheers